Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with a little digital audio workstation, tutorial, audacity lesson, what have you, whatever you want to call this. I don't really know what this video should be called, um, but I do think it's an important video uh, nonetheless. And the reason why I wanted to make this is people who are new to recording, a lot of times uh, they don't really know where to start. And, uh, you know, some people will say, oh, uh, use Audacity, it's free. Uh, you can use LMMS, it's free. You can use Reaper, it's cheap. Uh, and I have all three of those open right here on my desktop. So as you can see, I have Audacity here in the front, LMMS here behind it, and then finally Reaper all the way in the back. Um, so as you look at these, uh, you may have heard the term DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. And uh, what that means, uh, basically it's a generic term that can mean any type of audio software like the ones you see on the screen. However, some people, me included, well, actually, I don't know, uh, partly me included, but uh, like I said, this is a, a loose term. So really, if you really want to look at this as DAW in its most developed sense, digital audio workstation, the only one on my screen right now that will fully qualify as a digital audio workstation is Reaper. And I'm going to go over the reasons why that is and why or why not uh, you may want to use Reaper or LMMS or Audacity. So, okay, let's start with Audacity. What is Audacity? Audacity is a audio recording and editing software. Um, it features multi-track recording. And what that means is I can record a track here and then I could go in and record another track, blah, 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 below that track. And then if I zoom in here, sorry, this is a huge audio file, but if you can see, I just overdubbed a second track on top of this other track that was already there with my talking. So what that's what we mean when we say multi-track or multi-channel. Uh, those two terms are interchangeable. Channel, track, channel, track, same thing. So... <clears throat> When I say multi-track or multi-channel, that means that you can have more than one or generally more than two channels because stereo is going to be two channel. Like this top track here, uh, I recorded my band practice uh, yesterday on my phone on a, and it came out as a stereo file and that is what you're looking at right there. Um, but I overdubbed a mono track on top of that. So, okay, multi-track audio is what Audacity is. Now, you may have heard the term MIDI before, and what MIDI stands for is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Now, that term in itself can be a little bit confusing uh, until you really understand what it is. But if we go here to LMMS, LMMS deals mostly in MIDI. Um, it's a different type of thing than Audacity is. Now, why would you want to use one over the other? Now, it depends on what you're doing. If you're just recording live tracks, live audio tracks, uh, Audacity will work just fine. Like live, you know, like guitar, vocals, bass, drums, uh, those type of things with microphones, mixers, and interfaces. Audacity will work to allow you to record tracks and overdub other tracks on top of them. However, there is several reasons why you would maybe want to use a program like Reaper rather than Audacity when doing, when doing something like that. Now, Audacity is great for several things, and I'll explain to you what I actually use Audacity for personally. Um, mostly what I use Audacity for is if I'm recording something like uh, a live performance or if I'm doing something quick, you know, I just want a quick audio recording, I don't want to have to fuss with it too much. Um, when I record my podcasts, uh, if I'm not doing it through YouTube Live, which I do pretty much all the time now, but even after I do that, once I record it through uh, OBS, my streaming software, and I have the file, I always edit it in Audacity. Um, I also use Audacity for converting files. Uh, sometimes 
on occasion I've recorded entire songs in Audacity, even though it is not my preferred program to do that with. But sometimes I just want to. Sometimes I like to have fun and do that, and I have. Um, and I've done tutorials on how to do it, and some people like to do it. However, the main reason why you wouldn't really want to use Audacity as your main recording program, unless you it's the only choice you really have, um, is for one particular thing. And I, I don't mean just MIDI. Like, let's say your MIDI has nothing to do with the music you're making, and you just don't audio. But there's still a great advantage that Reaper has over Audacity, and that is real-time effects processing. Um, Audacity, even though now... Uh, well, okay, let me just give you an example here. Say I wanted to do, let's zoom out on this track, and I wanted to put a compressor on this particular track. So in Audacity, the general way you're going to do that is go to Effect up here, and then I select Compressor, and then, you know, I put in my settings. I'm just going to leave everything the default and click OK. Now that's going to process that track and compress it, and then once it's done, it's going to sound like how it sounds. If I wanted to change it back, I have to either undo it, or I could have selected the track, pressed Control D, and made a duplicate, mute that one first, and that's kind of like my backup, and then process this one. If I don't like it, then I just delete that one, and I have my backup there. Okay, so as you can see, this could, over time, if you're working with a large project with a lot of tracks, you know, say you had eight different drum tracks, a guitar, couple guitar tracks, vocal tracks, um, individually processing every single channel for every single bit of EQ, uh, effects, reverb, compression, or anything you want to do on it can become very tedious and may uh, it, it's kind of a destructive way to work. Whereas in something like Reaper, if I go here to one of my audio tracks in this Reaper, uh, Reaper project here, and if I click on effects, we can see here I have a limiter and a EQ both on this um, kick channel. And if I wanted to shut those off, all I have to do, you don't even have to remove them. I can just bypass them by unchecking them. And so if I play this back, let me play it real quick. Let's see if I take these off, then it bypasses those effects. So. Anyway, like what I'm trying to say is it's not destructive. So any I can put any amount of effects on here, and it's not actually going to change this channel of audio whatsoever. That audio channel is going to stay exactly how it is, and it's, it's basically like imagine you have a guitar and you're running into an effects pedal board and then out into your amp. The effects rack is the same concept. Uh, you have a rack of effects here, and you're running through all of those, and you can turn them on and off. Uh, as you will. So, oh, I just got a notification. Somebody found a fatal flaw in my tutorial. Oh, no. Okay. Um, anyway, I'll check that out here in a little bit. Uh, so, what I was saying is, yes, the effects uh, processing is a major disadvantage in Audacity. So, this is why I, I tend to use Audacity uh, for more simple things uh, if I'm just doing a quick edit on like a stereo file like this one if I want to do uh, podcast editing. Now, uh, for editing, you know, not just effects processing, editing, I love Audacity. Like if I want to clip out little things like this, this, you know, this was all the banter in between the songs. It's really easy to do that. Just highlight, press delete. You know, say this is all I wanted to do to this, this track or this uh, file. Once I have all that out of there, then I could do that. Let's get off the beginning stuff here. And then just go to File and Export. And then I could export as MP3, Wave, or whatever. You know, and then like I have all that cleaned up and I can re upload it, share with my bandmates, and uh, send it to them and everything, and it's all done. Uh, to do that in Reaper, it'd be kind of a more involved process. It would, it would you know, the Reaper tools you have to go through and select them and it's a little more difficult uh, because it's not really, you know, editing, you can do really good editing in Reaper, but uh, since it has so many other features, if I'm doing a simple process like that, then I would tend to use Audacity. So that leaves us with what? That leaves us with LMMS. Why would you use LMMS? LMMS is a totally different thing. Um, LMMS 
uh, focuses more on electronic music. So if I play back this right here. Now, what this is, is LMMS has very, very little features as far as audio recording goes. Um, this is geared more towards an electronic musician. And the way that this works is you have a lot of built-in plugins that are virtual instruments. And you can drag them over here into your pattern editor, create patterns. I can double click this and I have a piano roll, as you can see here. And then these are MIDI notes. And I'm just placing random MIDI notes there. But if I play this back, you can hear that sounds pretty crazy. But uh, you get the idea. What you could do then is you can create all of these different uh, patterns. Like, say if I have part D here, this pattern I just created. Uh, let me delete that because that's not going to fit. Um, uh, once I have all my patterns, they're all here in this little box. Then I can just start arranging them over here in the song editor. So, you know, basically just draw in what I want to do. And LMS is very, so uh, very familiar, familiar, very similar to the program uh, FL Studio, which some of you may have heard of um, or even used. So, once again, uh, also, well, also, uh, LMMS also has real-time processing, just as Reaper does. Now, Reaper, it still has a one-up over LMMS as well, because it also can work with MIDI. And as you can see, I have MIDI files right here. So. To be a true digital audio workstation, kind of the general rule is these days that you have to be able to work with MIDI and audio and have real-time effects processing. So LMMS is really just MIDI. It does have real-time effects processing, but it doesn't really have audio. You can work with samples and things like that, but I can't add audio tracks and record my drum set directly into LMMS. At least not yet. I think like at some point they plan on doing that, but right now you can't. Um, with Audacity, you can record audio directly in, multi-track, you can overdub, you can do effects processing, but it's not real-time effects processing. Uh, the effects are processed on the track and it's destructive. Um, so you can copy and back up and things like that, but it's just a little bit different. So which one is right for you? Now, this is going to uh, be determined basically by what you want to do. If you just want to record something quick and easy, and you're not going to do a lot of production, you know, a lot of effects processing, overdubbing, uh, things like that. If you just want to record your band practice or even some demos and some simple ideas, and, or you just want to start learning how to do stuff, Audacity is a great place to start. Um, also, if you want to do wave editing and podcast editing, um, Audacity is also great to use. I, I've actually made a full tutorial on uh, creating a podcast using Audacity. Uh, I'll try to post a link to that down below. I'll have to look for it. Um, but if you're curious about that, Audacity is great for podcasting. It's my favorite, actually. Um, so if you're doing any of those, Audacity will be perfect. Now, if you want to work primarily in electronic music and you don't really have any instruments that you want to play except for a MIDI controller, um, you can use LMMS. And LMMS is also free, just like Audacity. And uh, it's really great. Uh, you can come up with some really cool stuff, and it's a lot of fun to use. Um, the uh, YouTuber uh, Umfa has some great tutorials on LMMS on his channel. Uh, so you can check some of those out. And finally, if you're fully wanting to produce music, and you're really serious, and you want to get into doing a lot of stuff, audio and MIDI, I would suggest something like Reaper or Reaper. Uh, Reaper, I think, is really great. I love it because it runs on Linux, it runs on Windows, it runs on Mac. It does everything that I could imagine it to be able to do, um, and it's just really good. I'm not getting paid by Reaper. They don't even... Actually, the crazy thing about Reaper is I actually asked them in the past if they would do, like, affiliate links or something. They won't. They turn it down, which is crazy in today's, today's age. Like, they don't want any people doing affiliate links. Uh, they want their software to be really good and it is it's really really good um you know other ones like reaper would be pro tools uh cubase uh, uh what's the one um uh like garage band is you know garage band is actually pretty good these days uh and logic logic is really good garage band's kind of like these days is kind of like logic light 
Uh, but yeah, it's still GarageBand still qualifies as a DAW because you can do digital audio and MIDI, and it's fully featured. Uh, it may not be as fully featured as something like Reaper, but it's still pretty good. Um, Reaper is a, a commercial software, but it's very cheap. Uh, it's not that expensive at all. I can't remember the actual price, but just go to their website and find it. It's under $100, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, it's really affordable. Um, Ableton Live is another one that would be considered a DAW, but it's a little bit different. Um, it just functions a little bit differently, but the core functionality is still there. Audio, MIDI, and real-time effects processing. However, it, it incorporates uh, features that uh, other software don't really have, which is, you know, these looping clips and things like that. Ableton is really, really good software. Uh, I love it. But too bad there's no version for uh, Linux. Uh, I know that there's something called uh, Bitwig Studio that runs on Linux. It's similar to Ableton. And one of my subscribers sent me a link uh, as a, a promotional copy to download it, but um, I have problems with it. I haven't really been able to uh, mess with it too much because it seems like you can only record to their cloud uh, rather than directly to your computer so I just I don't know it was kind of giving me some trouble and it's kind of the same way Pro Tools uh, first records to their cloud too and it seems to have issues um, so anyway hopefully that helped you guys understand what the difference is between all these different softwares and why you should use one over one one of the others um, because I get a lot of people you know in my comments sections you know fighting over you know you can't use audacity for this or you shouldn't do that with this and blah 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 people everybody thinks they know everything on YouTube <laughs> and like I mean that's cool you know everybody's learning all the time and uh, you know I appreciate the comments most of them as long as they're nice but uh, anyway guys hopefully this helped you guys out have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below and uh, be sure to subscribe and check out my music uh, at anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. I'm selling a 180-gram copy of uh, Minnesota on vinyl right now for only 10 bucks with free shipping in the U.S. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great, great rest of your week.